today's Wednesday, May 30th. Is it May 30th? He doesn't actually know. He started the recording, and here we are. It's May 30th. It is May 30th. Okay. And Great. we've got all kinds of security news and... Robot. Uh, robots. Lack of security. Like, the, the security stories should be a warning to the people that are working on the robots and the AI. Because if you build it, it's not going to be secure. And then all of a sudden, we've got Skynet. And it's going to be your fault. If you build it, the hackers will come. <laughs> the hackers are already there. They're just waiting for you to... You know, all you got to do is put that, that MP5 in the hands of the robot. And then that's Skynet. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Google and Microsoft have disclosed a new CPU flaw. And the fix can slow machines down. Yes, yes, this is another variant of that uh, CPU flaw that just keeps on giving. Yeah, this is more speculative execution. It's actually fixed by some of the previous patches, although you need a firmware patch to really get past it. But the big thing about this one is they're finally admitting up to 8% performance hit if you uh, actually patch this thing. And it's so bad that it actually, after you install this patch it defaults to off you have yeah. to go in and turn it on because they're so afraid of the horrible performance this is going to cause oh intel's gonna intel's gonna have a class action lawsuit on their hands we're working on a separate video on that <laughs> oh. oh it's got some good props have you been working on that no but it's gonna have good props i've got some of them already <laughs> thanks to our patrons for buying those props they're gonna be in an upcoming video because Woo! Yeah, it's not too late to join the Patreon because uh, the the Give adpocalypse the adpocalypse with the topics we cover is just no. You get this in podcast form too, which is nice. You get it do it all at once at the beginning of the week. So, in Apple Mail, there's no protecting against PGP encrypted messages. Now, last week we reported on eFail. I, I think that was the name of it. So it's yeah, like yeah. you send somebody a PGP. There's no, there's not actually anything wrong with PGP. It's the mail readers. So you can send somebody an encrypted message that is a copy of an encrypted message that they're otherwise supposed to receive, but you can add some content to that message that would load from a remote server, and that remote load, when it's malicious, would let that remote server steal the contents of that encrypted message once your mail reader decrypts it. So this is not somebody stealing your private key or anything like that, but they can still get a copy of the encrypted message to read off of your system because your mail reader program is terrible. And the Apple mail reader program extra terrible yeah so they had previously said just turn off the external downloads to get around this but this researcher figured out a way to adjust this slightly and defeat it even in that case so if you're using apple mail and pgp you shouldn't be doing that i think they're going to try to fix it with the add-in for apple mail which is like gpg tools or something and the the blame some of the blame may be with the implementation in gpg tools it's not clear. Although, like, if you're serious about security and encryption, are you? What, what's the Venn diagram of serious <laughs> about security and encryption? An Apple Mail user. Apple users. Mail user, yeah. Uh, Just two circles. T-Mobile is back in the news again. Uh, this bug let anyone see any customer's account details. And this is not the first time T-Mobile has had a bug like this, which is, it's surprising that this is coming up again because it was only less than a year ago they had the, almost the same issue. Yeah, this was a lookup feature that was supposed to be just for the call center workers. So it was just a website or a domain they would hit, and they could look things up with just a phone number. And they got in trouble for it, and they were like, oh, sorry, we fixed that. We've taken that offline. A different domain popped up that was the exact same thing. Like, I, I, how does that happen? I like to imagine the domain was, you know, lookup.com, and it's like lookup2.com. They just changed it <laughs> yeah. slightly. Yeah, T-Mobile customer lookup database coming soon to your mom's basement. Because everywhere has so, to be able to look it up, right? It's a yeah. bummer if you're you a could, uh, I, I think there, there might have been a uh, some sort of authentication to get you into the form. But if you just appended that phone number to the URL, you didn't even have to use the form. So the result screen was not <laughs> password protected. <laughs> That's what happens when we have non-computer scientists designing things like this. Just uh, <laughs> audit your stuff once in a while. Come on. Comcast. Comcast uh, has a similar bug. They're leaking their, their Xfinity subscriber customer data. And it's not just customer data. It's also like the Wi-Fi access point name and password. 
Yeah, and there's no way to turn it off. I think it's your house number mm -hmm. and uh, what was the other piece of was data? Your, it was your address and your house number and... I think maybe your name. Your name, your Wi-Fi, SSID, and your oh, Wi-Fi no, password. Oh, no, it was, it was uh, not the SSID. It was the customer number. Oh, customer So, And that's all things that someone could get out of your trash if you threw away a bill. So with that, they could look up your router credentials and they could even change them through the online form once yeah. they got there. So uh, that's only affected if you're using the official Xfinity router. If you have your own, you don't have to worry about it. Well, you do have to worry about it because you can still change the features on the modem and stuff, but they can't get past your owned router, which is an important lesson in don't use the cable company's modem because they own that hardware and they're terrible at securing it. They also downplayed that when they were asked about it. Yeah. So they didn't even take it seriously. Yeah, it's like, MVD. it's like, oh, this is designed this way. This is on purpose. It's just not supposed to be on the internet. It's just like, come on, guys. Come on. Z-Wave. You got any Z-Wave wireless devices? You know, home automation, whatever. Well, there's a new attack against Z-Wave called Z-Shave. So you can force Z-Wave uh, to... You can force two Z-Wave devices, which are conversing wirelessly, to downgrade the encryption they use to something that is crackable. About 100 million devices are vulnerable. So there goes your wireless Internet of Things, home automation, whatever. Once again, when contacted about this, they just downplayed it. And they said that it's not really that important because only the owner of the device would initiate the handshake. And they would be present at the time. So it wasn't really a big deal. But they're overlooking the fact that you could build a tiny device that could be battery powered for a week or more. And just, you know, drop it in the bushes nearby. <laughs> and it could constantly be waiting for that moment. So as soon as you try to pair devices, this thing could step in. If you've got a motorized Z-Wave pool cover, might not want to go swimming if somebody doesn't like you. Ooh, that's a horror story <laughs> trip. Trapped. Wasn't there a whole movie based on that premise where, like, two girls got trapped in a pool like that? Uh, that is a weak premise. It was very weak from the trailer. Someone can tell us the name of that movie, I'm sure. <laughs> 28 days later is that a that'd thing? be a long time to survive in a pool wouldn't it, <laughs> it was the, the the movie made it sound like it was like intentional like some guy locked him in there remember a few months ago when we reported on CAN bus uh, vulnerabilities security problems with the like so in your car everything connected to everything else you don't want to run a wire from everything to everything else you want to put everything on a bus but the bad news is that everything on that bus probably has lots of horrible security vulnerabilities. And so over a dozen security vulnerabilities have in fact been found in BMW vehicles. So if you can get access to that bus inside the vehicle, you can do all sorts of terrible things to that vehicle. And it turns out the entertainment system has access to that bus and basically no security. It operates on an open port and you can go through the, uh, what's the diagnostic the onboard the ODB, ODB. ODB. You can go in through ODB. Uh, they mentioned Ethernet. I don't. Do you, do you think BMWs have an Ethernet for sharing the car's internet connection? I'm yeah, there sure there that. is actually an Ethernet extension for CAN bus. and uh, wow. USB. But also, it turns out uh, BMW has over the air updates, and so <laughs> there were ways. I don't know if you could get all the way in. That's a three letter agency's wet dream. Yeah, but you can get into the entertainment system at least over the air. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like good good news the target drives a BMW and it's like oh hell boys we don't even have to leave the building okay next time he's over 60 miles an hour and his GPS has him placed on a highway he's going to swerve sharply to the left and drive into a pond we talk, I, don't, I don't remember if it was last week I think it was we talked about how the researchers can't even figure out how bad this is because <laughs> it's a felony to for example lock the brakes up on a BMW if you're testing this kind of thing because you're <laughs> You're entering into their network and doing bad things to their cars, and that's not legal. I was going to say, were, the, were those spy masters, were they like hicks? Like, hell, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't have to leave the holler. They're standing around a moonshine still, <laughs> wearing coveralls. <laughs> Tarnation, that sucker's plugged into the CAN bus. Well, let's just send a hard reset and fill that bus with noise, and the system will never come back online. <laughs> so, you know... People are doing, you know, technology stuff instead of coal mining here. More <laughs> likely than you think next time you talk to someone yeah. on the phone. I was a coal miner, but then I became a spy master. I worked for some guy named Q. We refuse to code switch here. 
<laughs> we will only use the Appalachian dialect. <laughs> Pornhub has launched VPN Hub, its own virtual private network app. So they're saying, hey, you know this ISP spying stuff? It's really bad. Why don't we give you a free VPN? Because incognito, it's not good enough. Well, I think a lot of their argument is a lot of people don't want you watching porn on their networks. And we insist that you watch porn wherever you feel like watching porn. <laughs> So, like the subway. They pay for our subscription service. <laughs> it is, uh, it's ad driven. There's a subscription model. I don't know exactly what it costs, but the ad driven one is unlimited bandwidth and data. There's no data caps because, of course, they want you watching high resolution videos at all times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pornhub. That's so funny. I love the pictures of people with Pornhub t shirts doing like social functions. <laughs> that's, that's a person who just does not care. <laughs> Well, most of their t-shirts are, are clever and innocent if you don't know what that is. Uh, the ones I've seen are just black t-shirts with <laughs> Pornhub.com. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, yeah, that's blatant. <laughs> there are some more clever t-shirts that they have that are a little more subtle, but that's fine. Listen, you need to know people you, that you're a premium <laughs> subscriber for that content. You know what is uh, not uh, subtle at all? It's this new security vault. Security now, I get the feeling from this... That AMD was not given a chance to respond to this at all. So you can stumble into that segue. <laughs> remember AMD's server CPUs, Epic, how they have encrypted memory extensions, and that was kind of a big deal, kind of a new thing in servers, uh, at least x86 servers, uh, to where like the memory is encrypted and different parts of the memory are encrypted with different keys. And so this is an article that says, "Oh my gosh, if somebody has administrative access on the computer." all of those different memory encryption keys could be recovered. Yeah, this has to do with... So, for example, if you run a web server on a parallel virtual machine, you can actually hit that web server and get the contents of memory of, from all of the other instances eventually. And these guys actually proved that. They brought in the, the reporter and they were like, yeah, what's what we can do? And eventually, their little web server was able to actually output all of the contents of the memory of a completely different virtual machine. Now, the, the problem with this is that it requires someone who has administrative access to the hardware, to the hardware itself, like someone who is an admin of the system. In the case of like Amazon, where Amazon has multiple customers on one box, even an admin of a particular virtual machine is not able to read the memory of another virtual machine without also being an admin on both boxes. So, uh, But with this, they can. Well, no, with this, they can read the memory only if they're an admin of the box. If you're an admin of just one virtual machine, you can't read the memory of another virtual machine without also being an admin on the box. So like, if I, if I buy a VM from Amazon and I'm an admin of that VM on Amazon, but I'm not a VM of the whole box, I'm stuck. Yeah, the whole idea is that it's a poor actor that's running the overall server. Yeah. Or someone who has taken over thanks to a speculative memory <laughs> exploit. <laughs> or something like that, yeah, yeah. So your machine has to be compromised, and this sort of defeats the, the layers of encryption. So I, it's going to be interesting to see how Amazon, AMD responds to this. I think that the because it doesn't compromise... It's not a complete compromise in that scenario with the whole like one VM versus two VMs. I don't think this is especially bad news for, for AMD, and they can probably shore up the deficiency here, but it's really hard to protect. If somebody has administrative access to a server, it's really hard to protect the workloads running on that server from the evil admin, if that makes sense. But they claim to do so. Yeah. yeah. No, this article's not loading. Oh, Variety.com clearly did not get any GDPR memos. We've updated our terms of service. It was, it was kind of a crappy story anyway, even if we can't see it. I don't think we've lost much. Oh, there, oh, there, 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 there we go. go. There we go. It's back. <laughs> Two French teenagers have been in con uh, arrested in connection with the Vivo hack. So the Vivo hack was Vivo didn't have very secure passwords on their YouTube account. <laughs> yeah, so they so, it was pro-Palestinian propaganda. They took... Uh, Despacito, I haven't said it. Apparently that's the most watched video last year. I don't even know what it is. It's a, it's a song. Uh, 
Shakira, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, all the big names. Even Weird Al uses Vivo. They went in and, well, I don't think he was the hacked, The only though. musician you know. <laughs> he, they went in and took their content down and put up pro-Palestinian propaganda in place of them. And it was a big embarrassment for Vivo. What, on, like, Taylor Swift's videos? So, like, you look up one of her new songs and that's Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, it was all the most popular stuff. <laughs> Taylor Swift is awfully excited about Death to the Infidels. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> she said that her whole new album was about reputation. I didn't know she was into this. <laughs> She's been radicalized by Twitter. Could you imagine? <laughs> Taylor Swift joins ISIS. Are you a parent or on the receiving end of a parent that has installed a monitoring software on your phone? Well, I've got some bad news for you. Uh, this monitoring company stuff has been hacked. Uh, servers that stored teenagers' Apple ID email addresses and plain text passwords, among other things, that's all been compromised. There's a lot of stories about these. It's called Teen Safe. These apps that supposedly protect your teen, and I don't think we've ever read about one that first works of all, correctly. The yeah. filters. Uh, we talked about this last week. It is impossible for a filter to move faster than the internet. There's always going to be something that you don't want your kids to look at that's available through the filter, and there's going to be a lot of stuff that maybe you do want them to look at that the filter is going to false positive. But none of that is as bad as plain text passwords. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, you know, even if, you know, there's a group of teenagers that is, you know, operating under this software, they're going to come up with code for stuff. So the code for, like, let's go do hard drugs behind the school will be, you know, something like, let's go work on our homework behind the dumpster or something. But then behind the dumpster. What, what's the code for working on your homework behind the dumpster? <laughs> Let's for real go work on our homework <laughs> behind the dumpster. Well, but like with the, the number four, yeah. for real. While we're behind the dumpster working on our homework, if you know mm. what I mean. <laughs> know what I mean? Say the moral wink, wink, nudge, nudge. A winky uh, eye alcohol suggestion face. I don't know. Our next story is going to be from TechCrunch. Also did not get the GDPR memo, apparently. Amazon's uh, facial recognition software raises privacy concerns with the ACLU. So Amazon's wanting to get into the face recognition thing as well. Oh, well, they're in it. It's recognition with a K, which makes oh. it edgy. <laughs> it, maybe it's from the Mortal Kombat universe. And uh, so they have sold this software. It's like an app that uh, does facial recognition for law enforcement. And they're really excited about it. They actually press release it, and they're like, look what we're doing with law enforcement. But the ACLU is stepping in and saying, this is terrible. We don't need facial recognition used in this way. It's overreach. Hmm. Neat. You know, I'm kind of okay with them using a K instead of a C. Because C is just a letter that imitates other letters. Nah, I it think, should be destroyed. I think when, <laughs> anytime that you have a word, That's that, racist. a word that should be spelled with a CH and you use a K, I'm now, against. Now, CH should be its own character. Like a, uh, a diphthong, like a, a combined character. Mm. C is a useless glyph. Remove C from the alphabet. Level it only, one language tips. It only mimics S or K. If you've ever played Factorio, our next article is going to be really exciting for you. Because robots can now complete tasks simply by observing humans. So, yeah, it's like you need to do sorting or you need to do other stuff. The, the website you want to look just... like a horse? Like... <laughs> <laughs> the robot can just observe you and, and follow your lead. So I saw this last year. I saw something like this last year at Computex. It was just it was just a sorting robot, and it's like you know you you don't need to program it or do anything. You just put it on the conveyor belt, and you show it which things go where, and then it just it just does it. And it was it took about ten minutes to train a robot to pick up about twenty different items from a conveyor belt and sort them into bins, and it totally did fine. And that's that's it was computer vision and all the other stuff, and it totally worked fine. And it would reorient them correctly, and and it and it was like once it was out of learning mode, it was insanely fast. I would love that for my dog's toys. I, I put up my dog's toys every evening, like in a certain part of the house. Every morning, first thing she does is immediately grab all of them and then just scatter them everywhere. Is it, couldn't you train the dog to do that? You know, I don't know if she has the same sort of learning capability as this robot. Yeah, so. Well. so this is NVIDIA technology, and NVIDIA is sort of at the forefront of this whole teach a robot to do things. And the best they can do is basically like you're describing. They show a video of some toys and it sorts the toys and puts them in different places. It can't do much more than that, but it certainly is exciting to think that we might be entering into a world, well, maybe exciting and terrifying, <laughs> because just think, I mean, we talk about with robots, job destruction, 
think about the job destruction of robots kind of today. It just has to. I mean, you wouldn't even have to tell the person that they're being replaced. You just let the robot observe them. It's like, oh, hey, this is a robot that's going to follow you around for a little while. You mean like with vibrating hand wands like we learned at Amazon last week? Vibrating hand wands? Yeah, yeah, the, like the Amazon thing. You put on the, the, the bracelet and it vibrates. Oh, that and wasn't the last week. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was a while that was ago. months ago. <laughs> well, but that wasn't... Amazon's getting lots of data news. from that. Yeah, the robot wasn't observing, but I guess visually at least. But it would be even easier to do if all it has to do is... They're just pointing a camera at you while you work, and somewhere there's a robot watching a screen. <laughs> Bob, don't pay attention to this robot following you around. He's definitely not here to take your job. <laughs> Our next story is about there, there's like why this Amazon Echo. So there's this, it's been everywhere. If you haven't seen it, this family has an Amazon Echo, and it recorded them having a conversation about hardwood floors and other things. Uh, it put it in a in a file. And then it sent a text message of that conversation to someone in that family's contact book or their address book or whatever. And so, as unlikely as it sounds, Amazon's explanation for that is that that's what Alexa, the assistant, heard in the conversation. Yeah, Alexa had just... It was misinterpretation by Alexa. They did not ever say the things that should make Alexa do that. But Alexa thought, it's like, well, that sounds pretty close. So Alexa was like, hey, do you want me to record this? And th somehow the word right came up and it was like, okay, I'm recording. I was like, hey, do you want me to send this to a random person in your contact list? And somehow the word right came up again. And so it sent it on. <laughs> all right. There's even, <laughs> are you sure prompts Yeah. in all of this? And apparently Alexa heard what she thought was yes or right every time the are you sure prompts came up. <laughs> it just sounds so extraordinarily unlikely and yet it is very much the three million monkeys for an unlimited amount of time cranking out Shakespeare's plays. Yeah, and do, do we want this in our house? I mean, I certainly don't, but <laughs> it's such a risk because think about like what if it wasn't, you weren't talking about hardwood floors. What if you were talking about these people that got the message? <laughs> Man, I really hated going to that dinner party tonight. Yeah, exactly. Those people were miserable, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a pair of stories about this and about and Amazon's like, oh, we're working on this. The family wants a refund for all of their Amazon devices. Amazon's like, well, we can configure them so this will never happen again. But the family's like, nope, we want these devices gone. We want no part of this. This is crazy. So that's the that's the correct response. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't have gotten them in the first place. How would you like to unleash a robot to uh, wage, like, just like a murder bot, if you will? But it's going to be murder, murdering weeds. So, yeah, yeah. This, this bot, it, you think, I was kind of expecting it to, you know, reach down and pull the weed. But that's not what it's doing. It just sprays it, right? Yeah, it just sprays it with some sort of chemical. But it can tell the difference between the good plant and the weed. And it can deliver the chemical with such precision that you don't have to worry about the plant being immune to the weed. And the reason this is a big story, so if you don't know about agriculture in the modern day, what we do is we take a poison like Roundup and we spray everything. The people, <laughs> the plants, it just we just blanket the earth with it's it. It's fine. And we plant seeds that have been genetically modified to be immune to Roundup. And that's a big What business. could possibly go wrong? That's your corn. <laughs> yeah. It's your soy. <laughs> Literally. And the great thing about that is those seeds, the contract is you can't use the same seeds next year. You have to buy them again. So the most exciting thing about this robot is that we can now spray, spray concentrated sulfuric acid directly on the weeds. And it's totally okay. But it's like 80% less poison in the ground because we're not just dropping it from a plane onto everything. I think that, like, let's do the math there. It's like, in, like we've got a three-acre field that we're going to blanket with poison. And we're going to have laser-focused targeting of whatever weeds happen as they come up. And we're only using 20% of the material of that. That seems like a lot. Well, yeah, because they're going hard. To make. <laughs> yeah. The other thing they talk about in that article is that the the whole idea of just dumping Roundup on everything has led to super weeds. So super it's, weeds. It's like the you know vaccination and uh, oh, or not vaccination, bugs. but yeah. uh, antibiotics. So we're creating super bugs because we overuse antibiotics and we overuse pesticides. We get super weeds. 
So you really just let them have it to make sure that they will die. Does the robot have like a pair of sunglasses and it's like 420 blaze it and then it like <laughs> shoots the weed? It's literally, like all the weeds are Sarah Connor. It's literally the weed Terminator. But yeah, I think that, but I I wonder, that that's, that's such a powerful, you got names like uh, Monsanto and Dow. Super, super powerful people. And I wonder if these weed robot people are in a little bit of danger maybe. Level one needs a couple million dollars, and we'll do our own weed robot. But we're not going to use poisons. We're going to pull the weeds, and we're going to turn it into an augmented reality computer game. Well, I, I don't think you need to pull a the weeds. A computer weed. game? Remember <laughs> the, the worst uh, game ever. When, when Musk launched the flamethrower, that's based on a weed control flamethrower. <laughs> How much fun would that be? Oh. <laughs> You're just like a little robot this big, but from your perspective, it's like... You know, you're you're an ant in a giant world, and you're using a, a miniature like flamethrower. It could be <laughs> multiplayer. Yeah. So right. you know, it's like competing squads who can burn the most weeds in a given amount of time. I and think it, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, it's, and you're playing in VR, but you're playing with a real, actual little remote control robot. Somewhere thing. in Kansas. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> in Kansas, helping a farmer with his weeds. And there's a cash prize. So. You know, it's like that there, fierce is, competition. Is this game esports ready? Oh yeah, absolutely. More esports ready than PUBG. <laughs> yeah. Every corn Pour harvest season, there's going to be a you know worldwide tournament. It's broadcasted <laughs> in every sports bar across America. It was big news. I think we even reported on it last week or a couple of weeks ago, where the Google AI was making phone calls on behalf of people. It's like duplex. Yeah, it's like, hey Google AI, set up the uh, set up a hair appointment for me at the local salon place. And it made the call and conversed with the human and all this kind of stuff. Well, Microsoft has demoed a similar technology, but it's only available in China. And I'm not sure if this is like a Me Too type press event. Uh, I don't know if that's the correct meme to use, but... <laughs> what? How? What? Uh, do you not... Me Too? You don't understand what Me Too is, do you? Oh, oh, you're talking... Yeah, so hashtag Me Too. <laughs> oh, yeah, with the, the bunny and the rice. No, this is not the bunny. Well, no, Me Too is like sexual assault and anyway the, uh, <laughs> you, you missed you just thought me too meant like we're also trying to release this yeah, at the same time this the, is something that the me too movement is ha, pro tip never use that hashtag <laughs> yeah that's that's for describing sexual assault but this like, is shao ice i think is how you're supposed to pronounce it and it's part of wechat so you can actually unlike just making appointments and stuff for you you can just interact with this thing and recently Sometimes you'll be chatting with it, and it'll just call you, and you'll have a conversation. They, it was not the, creepy at all. The Verge kind of, they talked about Tay, and it was like, you know, maybe Microsoft didn't release this in the U.S. because they're still burning from Tay. You know, it's like <laughs> never again will we let them touch our beautiful AI and turn it racist and national Terrible. socialist. <laughs> yeah, see, in China, if they do that, they lose off of their social score. That's right, yeah. <laughs> you can't fly anymore if you turn Tay racist in China. You think they have a 4chan in China? <laughs> like they don't care that they're degenerates. Like. Apple has uh, signed a deal with Volkswagen for driverless cars. So Apple working on the driverless cars is apparently hiring Volkswagen to do the driverless cars. No, they're that just getting the cars from them. They couldn't find anybody to partner with. I think Lexus ended up turning them down. Wow. And uh, some of those other high-end luxury car companies. And they just couldn't seem to find anybody who was on board to be the Apple car. They tried to make their own and failed miserably. They talked about, it's like, these are our top engineers and they can't figure out how to build a car. So, yeah. They actually just bought a couple of like cube vans that they're going to transition, but <laughs> Apple's... <laughs> driverless car program is not looking too good that's sort of scary that it's uh not farther along than that because it should totally be farther along than that well it seems apple is <laughs> just trying to mimic other people's success which is not anything new well it talked about how they got the cube vans and the first thing they did was they replaced the seats and the dashboard it's like is that really is that what the ai team should be doing <laughs> let's make sure that the upholstery is like nice clean white <laughs> You know, because you don't want white upholstery in your car because you never spill anything in your Get car. Get rid of the ignition. It's just going to run all the time. There's no way to turn it on or off. <laughs> It'll just know when it needs to be on yeah. or off. It just works. <laughs>
Our next story comes to us from Vegas, where some people are really freaked out about robots replacing them in Vegas. It's not the stripper robots, is it? <laughs> unfortunately, no. <laughs> I don't think the strippers have a union, unfortunately. It's the bartenders and uh, service, like you know, the people that, uh, waiters and waitresses, though, the food service people, they have a union and they are talking about striking. They want higher pay, but they also want a sort of a guarantee that they won't be replaced by robots. I can't like of all the jobs there, I'd say bartender. Like that would be so easy to automate, right? With oh, they've already drinks. got yeah. robot bartenders for sure. I've yeah. met Bartu D two. He's an amazing robot. Did you get a drink from him? I did. What did you order? Uh, I think it was a rum and coke. It's it's a pretty <laughs> vanilla choice. That's usually what I get. But it's made by a robot. If I have to get a, a drink and alcohol. But yeah, I. What I don't see, like, what's the bargaining power here? Of course, you know, going on strike is what they're doing here, but... I mean, the thing is, is that it's not... I mean, being a good bartender is more skilled than a waiter, I think. But, like, is it... But couldn't you hire... Someone else to do it? A, a pretty girl who's very friendly, but doesn't know jack about mixing drinks. Well, and no, just have her sitting at the, the bar. Buttons. No, she's just sitting at the bar, and she'll hang out with you. But I think I saw this in Idiocracy, like when he went into the hospital and it was just a big grid of buttons and it's like... Well, oh. haven't you ever... Well, no, someone still has to mix it, though, assuming they don't do the robots. But, like, with the with the girl thing, when it gets really busy in, like, a club, there's no way she's going to be able to keep up. And you can't hear anybody talk in those environments anyway. Well, so what's what's the skill the bartender's going to have in that situation that we care about? But they're going to actually be able to mix the drinks correctly in a really chaotic environment. Robots oh, the robots totally can do, do that. that. You think, I, I don't know. Well, you just add, Handling a bunch of belligerent drunk people at 3 a.m. when add, they don't know how to press the button? You add more mixing stations. Have but you, the user, the thing is you're underestimating how stupid the user is and how drunk the user is. I don't know. I've seen some amazing animatronics at Disney. So I'm imagining like Pirates of the Caribbean except with alcoholic drinks and the robots are doing all that. Um, so they can sing and make alcohol. Listen. Oh, no, I'm saying I'm not I'm having an issue with the robot. I'm having an issue with the user who has to put in the input like... I wanted a Bahama Mama, and this thing gave me this other drink, even though they actually did click on Bahama Mama, but they're too stupid to understand the UI. Well, that's, the, they'll just talk to it. That's when the robot sprays them in the eyes with OC pepper spray, <laughs> and they carry them out. <laughs> so don't, no robo, uh, what is it called? Not a bar hop. What do they call them? The, the bouncers. No robo bouncers yet? Oh, well, why not? Eventually. I mean, with a taser, a robo bouncer could be super effective. <laughs> they just like bring out a sled and look I've been waiting 20 years 20 years for um, Ronald Reagan to serve me drinks at a restaurant It's it will happen within my lifetime you want a robot Ronald Reagan? yeah looking back to the future <laughs> <laughs> or that Chinese guy I don't know who that was I don't either one pop culture reference is lost on me I'm the one who's lost now <laughs> Thanks to AI, a third person is arrested following a pop superstar's concert. So this guy is apparently a superstar in China. Yeah, I'd never heard of him. I, but yeah, I don't know who this guy is. They talked about how his Australian tour made more than like Kaylee, Katy Perry and Taylor Swift. Is wow. he like the yeah. Psy of China? They describe the the music as like the most vapid, program like formulaic garbage that you could ever imagine and yet he's the most popular man in China <laughs> I can see that <laughs> so what you're saying is if we as level 1 stick with the formulaic garbage of the news we're going to be really popular I don't uh, think that our yeah. stuff is really <laughs> that's the, not the what I'm saying <laughs> and you know it's not true <laughs> I tried, I tried so hard but that this is more uh, AI, uh, we talked about the AI that they're going to do the uh, visual recognition stuff they're doing in Africa, this is what that is this is what it leads to Three guys, and the guy, the, the last guy they arrested, the third guy, guess what his crime was? Did you see that? Uh, stealing potatoes. $17,000 worth of potatoes. Was he a lobby? <laughs> his potatoes. So obscure. <laughs> like, how many truckloads of potatoes do you think seventeen grand is? At least two. Impressive. At that's least two trucks. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of potatoes. And depending on one guy, too, like what... what I gotta know more. Like, were there accomplices? Yeah, that's how the story. Is, how was it just one guy? Did the guy like? Was it the Hamburglar? <laughs> was it a potato sorting factory, and like potatoes that they were gonna throw away? It's like the fractional pennies rounding, like Superman two, 
plot, but with potatoes. <laughs> That's the story. He got seventeen thousand dollars worth, but one at a time every yeah. day, just leaving with his pocket, <laughs> or two, one in each pocket. Or, or, yeah, or what if you had just had like five or six? And you could very clearly tell. One in each shoe. <laughs> that horrible lump is a growth. I'm, I, I can't afford the doctor to see it. It's like well, that's just a potato. No, don't. Don't ask about that. <laughs> That's what the doctor says it looks like. You know what I should have invested in a long time ago? Robot submarines to find treasure because this thing has found a $17 billion treasure. This was a Spanish ship that wrecked. And the story here, the reason we're talking about it, is because this guy used a robot and an AI system. So he would just sit on his ship drinking margaritas, you know, reading comic books, and the robot would travel around below there and whenever it used the AI to be like hmm that doesn't seem like something I should find in the ocean let me investigate that further and it found a cannon and the AI was like let's look more at that and then so he got the ping and he looked at it and he was like oh my god that's it that's the Spanish galleon but the other thing about this story he doesn't get any of that 17 billion does well, it go straight back to the government of Spain it's, yeah. it's Spain well Spain and Colombia are fighting over it and the last time, I think it's Colombia. I think the last time this happened is uh, 90% of it goes to Colombia. And so 10, there's a 10% finder's fee, but Colombia uh, has, uh, there's like a 5% split. And so then it's 5%. And then the income is taxed, which is not supposed to be taxed, but it's taxed at a rate of like 50%. So he may get 2.5% of $17 billion. But that's not bad. Yeah. He'll be fine. <laughs> He'll be able to continue looking for. Is this like is this like the uh, metal detector of the new age? Yeah, yeah like just, dads, well, suburban was, dads are going to be out with their submarines. It was two thousand feet down, yeah. so I don't think it's quite that simple. Well, you go, you take your inflatable kayak out in the oh, ocean, right, yeah. and then you know you have your little submarine. This is uh, this is from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in Massachusetts, which. Also, I think, is responsible for funding in whole or in part Sequest, which is the Star Trek of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds thrilling. Oh, the U.S. Army is turning to robot soldiers. The scary thing from this article is they're like, oh, yeah, five years, every unit in the Army is going to have a robot. And uh, let me see if I can find the picture here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's this, it was like, can you show us a little bit more of that robot? Because I'm pretty sure that's, <laughs> like, are those all things? Those are things used to hug the person. <laughs> you just roll up and you just, mm. well, the story, It's a security hug. Hug the person with hot lead. <laughs> they already are using some robots, but they're sort of purpose built. But what this is saying is we need a single chassis that we can sort of modularly add different things to and it every, you know it all works the same way and what they're saying is for sure these things will not be making decisions about who to shoot they might have guns on them but it will always be a person and not a computer that's making that decision <laughs> and they would never ever even plan for a computer visually making decisions about who to kill <laughs> that's an amazing segue into our next story where the uh, Federal BizOps website is they're looking for a company to develop some computer software to determine who to shoot and kill. <laughs> we would never do that. Oh, Currently. yeah. But yeah, in this, the future, we might. It's uh, Urban Reconnaissance Security with Supervised Autonomy. So they're look, it's like, we want to have some software that figures out threats and intents in an urban scenario. Yeah, you know, so, like those scenarios that we live in urban scenario so when everything hits the fan the preppers were right how well but the preppers never told me how to prep for the robot army coming to my house you just kiss your ass goodbye that's how you deal with it it's no wonder the terminators are so angry with everything everything is so duplicitous and it's like no you should not kill humans kill all humans no you should not kill him kill all humans we talked about that the the russians had the tank that sort of the same story it was the tank could target and fire automatically. It had all of the pieces in place, but they were like, nah, we're not going to let it. There's going to be another guy that just decides to tell it when to shoot. Neat. That can't possibly end badly, right? Yeah, it's not it's like fine. we could flip a switch and remove that guy from the equation. <laughs> uh, the Independent has got a story about DNA shape changed by doing terrible things to it, like adding copper and oxygen in places that oxygen should not go. But then they can use the malformed and, and misshapen DNA to make not horrible abominations against nature, but tiny little machines and computers. 
yeah, these would be machines that could live inside you uh, because they talk about, because it's based on DNA, the body is much less likely to attack it with white blood cells. To reject it, yeah. And so these things could be inside of you delivering medicine or cleaning out your arteries or whatever. You know, that's the dream. Wow, that would be an amazing tool for an assassin. You could target your person with individual DNA. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's a great, uh, some great fiction, dystopian fiction. It's called Wool. That's a, well, that's kind of a spoiler, though. <laughs> yeah, don't look it up on your own time because Ryan you might have already kind of spoiled it I think, I think this was already covered in the X-Men universe they put the uh, they put all the the anti-mutant stuff in all the food and so everybody was like why don't I have any mutant powers anymore and it's because it was in literally everything like high fructose corn syrup so are you saying if I start eating a vegan diet that I will have mutant powers no <laughs> your mutant powers will be diminished I think you're saying. But if she's going full organic, <laughs> she would be. She would get away from it. Well, you'd have to grow your own food though, because yeah. organic is in quotation marks there. In this universe, that processed food doesn't take away your mutant powers. It just gives you cancer. Is there organic food that's labeled as organic, but that's still used like Roundup ready? Uh, organic has a pretty loose definition yeah. for the FDA. Well, if it's got the the actual like seal on it, some stuff says organic, but it's not really. But if it has, like, the, the little seal, it actually is supposed to be legit. It's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how real that is, but it's supposed to be better. Finally, the last thing that we're going to leave you with is an AI that you can go play with. Remember how last year, I think it was last year, we declassified a whole bunch of stuff to do with the JFK assassination, and it was like, it was like 30, 40,000 documents. Well, Microsoft, in one of their uh, AI labs has come up with a project where they fed all of those documents to an AI and put it into a searchable database. And so this is a really neat application of uh, AI and technology and all sorts of stuff. And you can go play with it. You can search the files and see what the relationships are between all of the different documents and all of the stuff. And you can get like this sort of cluster where like one document references another document, talks about another document. And some of this, of course, is still redacted. But you can really piece together a lot of information from having all of this, all of these documents scanned and understood. Even the handwriting, like there's handwriting, and it's like, you know, search for every every mention of Oswald, and you can totally find it even in handwriting and anything. It's it's kind of can I can I attach little pieces of digital yarn between those blue <laughs> points? <laughs> it's on that. it's, it's yeah, doing it for you. It's doing the, there's an algorithm for the yarn. It's doing it for I you. I need to, I need an animated drawing tool. <laughs> Sadly, I don't think Microsoft added a print style sheet to this website, or I would say that you could print it out. I bet the, yeah, almost no one does print style sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Having worked on them, they're kind of a pain. <laughs> so this is a lot of fun. You should go play with this, because all the documents are just right there in the AI. Who knows? You might be able to figure out who the, uh, the other shooter was or whatever. <laughs> history teachers are. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is just a, a system of, like, it, it's totally meant to figure out who can figure it out and then they'll dispatch assassins to your home as soon as you've unlocked the secret <laughs> so it's Put just you waiting on the list, out all yeah, the people you know right. <laughs> oh, that's it for us for the news this week we will see you on Friday the big nonsense day actually we've got a bunch of stuff so we have to talk about uh, crypto and hardware gaming and gaming and nonsense on Friday it's going to be a big Friday woo Thank you.